Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the CHMC Masterclass Digital Event. My name is Natasha and I'm an Events Coordinator at CMI. And I'll shortly be handing over to David to begin today's event. If you have any questions during the event, you can ask them using the live chat box to the right of your screen. And we shall answer as many as we can during the Q&A. Today's session is being recorded and will be shared with you later today for those who book to attend. The event recording will also be available on the CMI website and the CMI YouTube channel. Now over to David, CHMC Assessment Manager at CMI to begin the event. Thanks, Natasha, and uh, morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us this morning. What I want to do first is take you through a little bit of background to Charter Management Consultant Award, and then we're going to talk about how you go through the assessment process, and then, as Natasha says, we can deal with any questions at the end. So let's crack on. I think the first question we need to ask ourselves is why Charter Management Consultant? What is the point of having an award for management consultants and why did it come about? Well, the first thing we need to think about is until Charter Management Consultant Award, there's no real standards in the management consultancy environment. Now, what I mean by that, that's not meant to be derogatory to any, any consultant, but what I mean by that is anybody can set themselves up as a management consultant. We could all be employed today find ourselves redundant tomorrow and decide not to go for another job, but set ourselves up as a management consultant. And there is no real definition of what that means. We can just call ourselves a management consultant and do particular work for people. The tr same is true on the other side as well. We can call ourselves something else, but do management consultancy tasks and do management consultancy work. And then what does that mean? So the award came about really to harmonize it, the, these inconsistencies in, in the professional environment and to make it easy for people to uh, deal with management consultants on a sound footing. So if you've got the uh, Charter Management Consultant Award, then and somebody you're engaging with knows what you can do. They know you can deliver quality. They know you can deliver consistency. You're able to demonstrate that by holding the award. You're able to stand up with peers and say, I've got the same award as you, I deliver the same standards, I cover the same things, I cover the whole breadth of being a management consultant, and I serve my clients really well and really consistently. And part of that is that actual network, that network of chartered management consultants to share ideas, to share best practice, to share quality, uh, and to, to you know, dominate the marketplace, if you like, really, because as this is moving forward, this is becoming more and more in demand, and certainly when we deal with government, government will be saying, you know, if we're going to engage with consultants, they need to have the, the Chartered Management Consultant Award. So it's really building momentum as we go along this. That said, we didn't sit there in isolation in CMI and say, we want to, you know, we, we're going to do this, we're going to do this for the, for the industry and the industry will be happy and we'll all make loads of money and it'll be great. This was developed with the industry and with a number of uh, big firms in the beta program and with the uh, MCA as well. So everybody came together in a group and said, then this is what we need. This is what it looks like. This is what quality means. This is what consistency means. These are the criteria we want to manage people by and we want to measure people by. And uh, once that was done, we put that to the uh, Privy Council and the Privy Council awarded CMI as the awarding body for Charter Management Consultant. So although lots of people were involved in the development of it, we are the only ones that can uh, that can uh, give you the award, can credit you with the award. The award is about professional recognition and it's about high standards of professional development and professional achievement. And part of that is once you've achieved the standard, you have to maintain the standard. So every 12 months, we will come to you and ask for CPD. What have you done to stay at the top of your game? And what are you planning to do in the next 12 months to continue to stay at the top of your game. This is not academic. This is not, uh, you know, you do it once like a degree, you do it once, you claim you own it all the time for the rest of your life. We can we can claim that award uh, continually. We have to continually refresh ourselves, show we're refreshing ourselves in order to maintain the award. And it's also not academic because this is very much aligned to real world practice. And indeed, when we, when we get to the assessment part, and I'll talk about this a bit more then, we are looking at real life. This is not I would, I could, I should, this is I did. This is what I did, this is how it made a difference. And treat us for the assessment process like a pitch, just like you would 
a uh, you know an important client when you're pitching to an important client. The award is about showing how you add value, where you add value, who you add value for, and it it is very much based on real work, real hands-on experience. As I say, not what you could do, not what you would do, but what you have done. So that's what we really want to see. We want to see the consultant that you are in order that we can recognize that officially and give you the status of, of Chartered Management Consultant. Now, you may be asking, well, I'm already a member of the MCA or a member of IC, or I've got this certificate or that certificate, and will that get me in to the, to the CHMC? Well, the answer is it links to it, but often by themselves, they won't get you the award. Everybody who gets the award has to go through the same process. Irrelevant of what qualifications you hold, what membership you hold, uh, where you sit hierarchically in an organisation, we don't grandfather people in. Everybody who gets this award has earned the award and gone through exactly the same process, whether you're on programme, experienced professional, 20 years of experience, senior director, whatever it might be, everybody goes through the same process. But certainly having a professional status and being a member of a professional uh, association will give you an advantage because you'll have the networks, you'll have the knowledge, you'll be going through the motions already and this is just about telling us what you do, how you stay at the top of the UK, how you got to be so good, how you got to be so recognised, and then we'll, we'll award you the status. So there are a number of routes to CHMC. Uh, the first one is what we call on programme, and this is where you'll have at least five years experience of operating as a management consultant. And you're likely to be on an in-house training programme. If you're with one of the bigger firms, we will have accredited their training programme to align with the criteria for the award. And if you're on one of those, that's going to give you a bit of a head start. It gets you to the point where you can apply and go for the assessment. But as I've said, you still need to go through the assessment process in the same way as anybody else. We use one template for applications. There's a written submission and a professional discussion. We use one template. Everybody uses the same template. But if you're on programme, we ask for more written evidence. The next route is what we call experienced professional. And this is where you've been operating for at least seven years as a management consultant. And if you come through this route, we don't ask for so much on the written submission. We almost take it for granted that because of your experience, you can prove more of that in a professional discussion. So we ask you for light, slightly less. It's a lighter approach to the written submission. The, the other routes that we have are there's a level seven professional consulting qualification. Now, this is for people who are not on program um, and have that experience and can use that experience as part of the application process. Now, if you go through that route, you still have to go through the application process exactly the same as everybody else. We have um, a route. We, we also have another route uh, that we've recently introduced called the associate uh, chartered management consultant. An associate is for people who have done three or four years as a management consultant and want to make sure they're going in the right direction. And what associate does is it, it looks at exactly the same criteria, but at a different level. And the benefit of that is to say, yes, I'm going in the right place. Look how good I am. Look how good I'm going to be when I've done five years or seven years. Um, and it also highlights where you are, uh, where you have gaps in your in your uh, strengths and where you may want to focus some energy in the next couple of years before you're in a position where you're ready to go for full chartered management consultant. So there's a new route there. It's not compulsory, it's an optional route. Excuse me a moment. Excuse me. It's an optional route, but it's a very good route to make sure that you're heading in the right direction, you're doing all the things you should be doing, you're doing all the things you need to be doing, and you're focusing your energy in the right place to develop as a fully rounded management consultant when the time comes. Now, one thing to, to remember is, as I mentioned earlier, with, with uh, naming of job roles, not everyone in an organization is a management consultant. Because you work in a management consultancy firm, are you actually a management consultant? And if you're not sure, I would have a look at the criteria, make sure that you can meet the criteria, talk to people in your firm before you submit an application. We have had applications from people who are very specialist. They might be IT architects, financial specialists, whatever it may be, and they're operating within a management consultancy firm, but they're not completing the whole breadth of the criteria for being recognized as a management consultant. So just check if you fall into that position, you may want to wait a little while before you put in an application. 
One good question to ask yourself is, what is my involvement? Am I parachuted in for a specific task and parachuted out again? Or am I in it for from, from, from the get-go for the long run? So think about that. Think about what's your relationship with a client. Is that covering the breadth of, of being a management consultant? As I say, talk to your peers, talk to your network, talk to people in your organisation. If you're an independent person, talk to people uh, in your independent network as well to make sure that you're you're going for the right award because there are other awards available if you don't fall into that. Um, I mentioned hierarchy. Hierarchy is not a guarantee of success. Hierarchy is not uh, a backdoor into this. We don't grandfather people into this. Wherever you sit in the organisation, you go through exactly the same process. As long as you meet that application criteria of three to four years if you're going for associate and at least five years plus if you're going for full chartered. You will undertake an internal assessment before registration and your firm, if you're in a firm, will say yes, you're ready or no, you're not. This is what you need to do. And once you've got to that stage, they will register you and you'll be ready to, to upload your submission onto the system. The system is all online. We send you a uh, individual link so you can access the system uh, and an individual code so you can get into the system. And it's very locked down between you uh, and us in who, who managing the system. When I say us, that's me and the assessors who will pick up your work and look at it. Um, we don't take anything outside of the template. So we're not looking for masses of information. Again, this is very real world. If you were pitching, you'd be asked to pitch, say, four sides of A4 with this very specific questions. If you put in 10, 15 sides, you're not going to get very far with the pitch. And so we need to treat this as real world. So all of that said, let's think about assessment and how assessment works. Well, once you've passed those internal checks and you've identified and nominated a sponsor to agree that you are a good person to go for this and you meet the criteria, they've done those checks internally and they're happy to, to put, your, put their name to your application. That application then gets submitted to what we call AO Docs. Uh, the submission is then picked up by one of my assessors and all of my assessors have been through this process uh, themselves. All of my assessors are chartered management consultants and uh, still operate as management consultants outside of the assessment process. They are individual, uh, sorry, not individual, they are uh, independent assessors. They're not employees of CMI. They are management consultants who also do assessing for us. They will look at your, your submission and will decide whether or not there's enough evidence. Now, if there isn't enough evidence, they will come back to you and say, we need some more evidence. Now, if that happens, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It gives you an opportunity to make your submission really shine and really give you the best po possible opportunity to get to the next stage, which is the professional discussion. The professional discussion happens online, and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. After that, the, uh, your submission and the evidence captured at the professional discussion will be moderated by, again, an independent moderator who will say, yes, I agree or disagree with the assessor's decision and will make sure that the assessment has been carried out fairly and transparently and everybody's being treated equally. Once that process has gone through, you'll be informed of the outcome. And if you're successful, you can use the uh, appropriate post-nominal letters are on everything that you do to show the world that you are a chartered management consultant or an associate chartered management consultant. So we've talked a bit about the, the framework and, and in monitoring the environment and making sure we harmonize the environment. Well, we look at the framework in, in, in slightly different ways because there are three levels to the framework. There's the foundation level, which is, is coming later on. There's the applied level, which we have now for people who aren't quite ready to do the full chartered manager. And then we have the full chart of management level as well. The framework is uh, different levels of the same criteria. So we look at exactly the same criteria across all three levels. The depth at which we uh, assess those is different for each level. Um, so if you're a full chartered manager, for example, you'll be leading and developing. If you're uh, applied level, you're probably going to be managing and following, in, uh, doing what you're told to a very high level and a very high degree. Uh, but the, the developing of those product policies, strategies, teams, that kind of thing is going to be looked at at, at uh, the full charter level. So it's the same criteria, different levels, as you would expect for different types of people within in the environment. To give you a, a, a rough idea here, at associate level, 
one of the criteria is about developing self-awareness and at associate level you would you understand how your actions may directly impact on your colleagues clients and stakeholders when facilitating the delivery of results and can flex your style accordingly so it's about understanding doing implementing at chartered level you're creating a culture of self-awareness which enhances your performance and the performance of your colleagues so it's much more strategic if you like at the higher levels so again same criteria different level of assessment to make it fair for everybody at whichever level you're operating at. so there's an opportunity for everybody here to, to gain recognition in some way or another so when we think about the the competency framework there are 54 competency competencies within the framework and it's really important to remember that we're assessing you not your organization now i say that because this is where it gets slightly difficult for those of us that have grown up in the west and, and been raised in the western culture from a very small age from a very when we're very small people we're told it's not about you it's about us it's about we there's no i in team all of those kinds of things and that's really hard to break sometimes when you get into a position where you're being assessed or interviewed or whatever it might be. You know, we did this, we did that, we did this, the team did this. We don't want to know that. And this is where it becomes rather difficult because what we want to know is what you did. So we're assessing you and your values and behaviours. We're assessing you and your leadership and management. We're assessing how you op uh, interact with clients and operating environments. We're assessing what you do in terms of professional development and CPD. We know what your firms do if you're with a firm. Uh, we know what your, we might know what your team does because we may have assessed other people within your team. But at, what we really want to know is about you, what you did, where you made a difference, what your role was in that team, what part you played in order to make that operation a success. So really, really uh, spend a lot of time thinking about what I did. Why do I make a difference? How do I improve things for, for clients? People often ask me, how long does it take? How long does this process take? And in, in a sense, it's it, how long is a piece of string really? Because different people will approach this in different ways. We're not asking for a lot of written evidence, um, but it really depends if you were the sort of person that did your homework on the night you got it, or if you were the sort of person that left it till Sunday night, last thing before you went to bed to get your homework done to hand in the next day. Really, that, and, and that's as broad as I can be really. Some people will say, I'm gonna do this uh, an hour in a lunchtime for the five days of the week and get it done. Some people will say, I'm gonna take Saturday and Sunday and crash the whole thing out. Some people will say, I took a couple of days off. Some people will say, I did a little bit a day for 14 days to get it done. So it really, really depends on how you work. But this is not a lot of information we're asking for. The word count is quite slow, quite small in each section. Uh, and we make no bones for that. Again, if you were pitching to a customer you're likely to be fixed to a word count, to a page count, whatever it is. And if you go over and give loads of waffle, that's not going to get you very far in the, in the uh, process. So when you're pulling all that together, when you're pulling all that information together, think about the tools that work for you. Now, I personally uh, prefer six serving men. So what, why, when, where, how, who, uh, what did I do? Why did I do it? When did I do it? How did I do it? Uh, what difference did it make? Where did it make a difference? Why did it make a difference? That kind of can, can, uh, gives a concrete foundation to my thinking and allows me to pull things together in a very structured way. Some people like star techniques. So what was the situation? What was the task? What was the action I undertook? And what result did I achieve? Now, those are just tool tools. But when you're thinking about compiling your written submission, think of a tool that works for you. Get a tool that works for you. Use it. You don't have to use these. If you don't have a tool, you may want to consider one of these as a way of concretizing your thinking in order to get a concise and well-rounded uh, written submission. When we've got your written submission, we are using what we call VAX in order to assess the evidence. And VAX is about validation. Is your evidence valid? Does it meet the criteria, the competencies, or is it just waffle? Now, one of the things you need to do when you do your written submission is you need to map your narrative against the competencies. Uh, there are two columns on the, on the template, one where you put your narrative and one where you say, this narrative relates to A1, B4, whatever it might be. Now, a good check on here in terms of validity is, have you got narrative that you can't map to anything? Now, if you have, you want to think about it again. Unless your narrative is very contextual, 
then keep it that contextual narrative small. So you might have a little paragraph saying something to, to give the rest of it context. But if you've got a lot of narrative you can't map, think again, go back, edit it, review it, make sure you're only putting stuff in there that relates to the competencies. That will give you the best possible chance of moving on to the next section. We look at whether the evidence is authentic. Is it your evidence or are you using somebody else's evidence? And one of the things we will look at is voices. Is there one voice in the narrative or are there several voices in the narrative which would raise a flag for me to say this has been cut and pasted from somewhere else? So we would come back to you and check whether or not that is actually your evidence. So make sure that it's only your evidence. And this comes in with a team, of course. You know, we did this, we did that. Well, what did you do? I did this, I did that. My role was X. We look to make sure the evidence you submit is current. And when we talk about current, if we have uh, applicants who are who are long in their career, sometimes it's easy to claim things we haven't done for a long time. You know, the example I always give about this is my first degree is in uh, IT applications. Uh, I'm allowed to say I've got that degree. That degree lasts for life, as all degrees do. Uh, but if I was called upon today to create an application, I'd probably struggle. So although I can do it, that isn't current. I couldn't necessarily do it if I was called on this afternoon to build an application. I would need more time to do that. So I wouldn't claim that as a current skill, current evidence that I can do something today. And the big one really is sufficiency. Is there enough evidence in your written submission for the assessor to say, yeah, I think you can do this. Let's take you on to the professional discussion or are they going to need to come back to you for more? Now, if they come back to you for more, we call that a referral. If they come back for a referral, um, you get one chance to submit more evidence and the word count drops again. So really, really make sure before you submit the first time, you've got the best possible submission that you can put in. Get someone else to have a look at it. Does it make sense? Is it in English? And when I say English, I mean not jargon. Would anybody outside of your team understand the words you're using, the phraseology, what you're talking about? Or is it very, very specific to what you're doing? So all of those things. And when you're thinking about the written submission, the really big question is, why should I be awarded CHMC status? Why me? Why now? What difference have I made? How have I made a difference? Where was that difference made? Thinking about six serving men here. When did I make a difference? Who, who uh, have I made a difference for and who agrees? Now, slight caveat here, when we're thinking about who, uh, all submissions have to be anonymized. So what we don't want to see is, I worked on a project with Mr. Jones for Santander and this was the outcome. Because if we, if we get um, applications where we can identify people or firms, we have to go through a legal process for confidentiality. The, we hit a button at our end, your submission will be deleted from the system you will be notified. Your legal team, if you work in a if you work in a firm, will be notified, and you have to do the whole thing again. So make sure that there aren't any names in the uh, application. What we want to see is I worked with a senior manager in the banking industry rather than Mr. Jones at Santander. That's fine for us. That's not a problem. Um, some firms, some organisations you work with, will be easy to identify, even if you anonymise them. Thinking here of. Perhaps you're working with the military, perhaps you're working with the NHS, perhaps you're working with a government body, uh, a government department, and there is only one of them. And we can, you know what it is, we know what it is. But in terms of confidentiality, you still can't name them. Even if that information is in the public domain, if you name them, we will send it back to you. So you have to be really, really careful about that. Just go through it, make sure it's anonymized, make sure it's generic in terms of, uh, you know, uh, banking environment sort of reporting to a c-suite manager that's plenty okay i'm often asked i haven't started this yet but when should i start and if you haven't started collecting evidence start today think about uh, building yourself an electronic shoebox have a folder somewhere that you can put all the evidence you do all the things you think might be relevant collect as much as possible select the evidence from that that best represents you on the journey best represents the uh, the way that you've behaved, the, the difference that you've made, all of those things. Select evidence that connects to the competencies and only evidence that connects to the competencies. If it doesn't connect, you can't map it, don't use it. Find something else. Reflect on your submission. Is this the best submission I can possibly do? Is this the best evidence that presents me in the best possible light? And once you've done all that, get someone else to have a quick look at it and then submit it when you're ready. There's no race to submit here. 
You've got plenty of time. Make sure that you give yourself the best possible opportunity. So when we look at evidence, we get two types of evidence generally. We get uh, weak evidence and strong evidence. And weak evidence really leaves us with the so what question. And we see things like the team works really well together and we achieve our goal of adding value to the organization and our clients. And I'm almost falling asleep reading that. That leaves me thinking, well, so what? What does that tell me about you? What does that tell me about the difference you made? What does it tell me about how you operate? It doesn't tell me anything. I have a specialist role within the team. I'm seen as an expert and undertake tasks that others can't. Great, put that on a job application. If you're gonna go for a job application, but maybe put that on your CV. But how is that telling me what you do in terms of this? And why should I give you the charter management status, charter management consultant status based on this, on, on that particular statement? So if you look at something, get somebody else to look at it and think, well, so what? Everybody does that, everybody says that. What does that really mean? Go back and review it, put something else in that makes more difference, more sense. So, for example, good evidence looks like in Project Y, I used my specialist knowledge to identify new opportunities for the client, resulting in increased productivity by utilization of emerging technology. So I can see what you did, can see what was involved, can see what you did for the client, what the results were. You know, we can make some suppositions of that, that we can go on and talk about that at the professional discussion. So make sure that your, your, your answers, your narrative is telling me what I need to hear. We talked about a referral. It's not all bad if you get a referral. It, you know, it's easy to go, oh, God, this is terrible. I've been referred. What do I do now? It's just asking for a little bit more or asking for a little bit more, something to be polished. Something is not quite as strong as we want it to be. There might be a gap in the evidence where you've not covered one particular thing, and we want you to, to give us more information about that. So it's an opportunity to make what you've done so far shine. So the main takeaway from the written submission, think about what difference you've made. It's all about you. Why you? Why now? And think about quality over quantity. We're not looking for you to fill up pages and pages. We want concise information. Think about ABC, accurate, brief and concise. Tell us what we need to know. Tell us as quickly as possible. Tell us in as few words as possible and we'll move you on to the next stage. And the next stage being the professional discussion. So the professional discussion is exactly what it says. It's not an interview. It's not a grilling. This is a discussion between two professionals who are very interested in what each other are doing uh, and very interested to know what you're doing as an individual so that we can award you the Charter Management Consultant status. It happens virtually. It will happen on a medium like this. We will see you face to face uh, but online. Um, and we really want to see you because if we do this on the telephone, we miss so much. You know, we miss all that body language. We miss that personal interaction. We can't see each other's eyes. We can't look into the whites of each other's eyes while we're, we're uh, discussing various topics. The point of the, uh, so uh, sorry, on top of that, you will need to provide some um, ID. Now, your ID can be your uh, driving license if you have one, passport if you have one, uh, works identification card that gets you in the building, anything that's got a photo of you on it and your name. We do this to make sure that we are uh, having a discussion with the appropriate person and not somebody else who's standing in for them because it's all gone a bit wrong somewhere. So we need to make sure that we are talking to the person we're supposed to be talking to. So you will be required to provide ID when you come to the session. The session will last approximately an hour, uh, an hour, hour and 15 minutes, something like that. Um, and there's no, there's no uh, indication from the time it takes as to whether or not you've passed. We are looking to get what we need from you. If we don't get what we need from you, if it becomes very clear early on that we're not getting what we need from you, we're not going to hang on forever and ever and ever until you can do it. So if you finish uh, early, we've got all the information we need and we've made a decision. If you finish late, we're either very interested in your conversation or we just need a little bit more. But either way, it's not ind indicative of whether it's a pass or fail. What indicates whether it's a pass or fail is whether or not you demonstrate how you meet the criteria. We will want to validate the evidence in your written submission and the discussion will be very individual and very tailored around your written submission. So have your written submission with you if you want. It's, you know, this is an open book thing. If you need to refer to that, we will, for example, say, I noticed in project two, you discussed X, Y, and Z. 
how did that work out? Can you tell me a bit more about that in a bit more detail? So having that in front of you as a reminder of what you've, what you've written, what you've claimed, is often quite useful. We will discuss competencies around uh, values and ethics and morality. And again, this is your, uh, your response to ethically challenging situations, not your firm's ethical policy. This is how you deal with ethics, how you deal with values and how you behave in those kinds of situations. We will have a discussion about CPD. And as I say, this is to say, how did you get to be so good and how are you going to stay at the top of your game? So this is an ongoing process and we will come back to you every year and ask you for uh, a record of your CPD. As I say, it's not a Q&A. Um, this is a, a, a genuine professional discussion tailored to what you've put in your written submission. But you can pass or fail. One of the things that you need to make sure you do is leave enough time. So we talk about an hour to 75 minutes. I would make sure you book at least two hours in your diary for this. And for the time that you're with us, treat us as the most important client. Don't be tempted to answer email. Don't be tempted to, to look at your phone if it rings. Don't be tempted to, you know, do anything else. Try and do two things at one, uh, at, at one time. Give us the attention that this needs in order that you give yourself the best possible opportunity to, to achieve. Make sure you turn up. Now, people say, well, of course I turn up, I'm there. My, my response is make sure you turn up mentally as well as physically. We have had situations where people have turned up physically, but actually aren't in a mental space to do it. So make sure that we are the only thing you're dealing with for those two hours. Make sure that you've cleared your head, make sure that you've cleared your desk, make sure that you're actually there being present, if you like, um, to, to uh, deal with what's gonna happen, to engage fully in the discussion to give yourself the best possible chance of success. As I say, treat this as, as, as a professional pitch. This is I, 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 me, 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 all about you. We're not gonna trick you. There are no trick questions. We're not gonna waste your time or waste our time. If we don't think you can succeed, we will not take you on to professional discussion. So if you get to the professional discussion stage, there's a good, you know, you're a good way there. So make sure that you give the professional discussion the best that you can give it, because that was where you're gonna you're gonna succeed or fail at that point. If you don't get there, if we don't take you to professional discussion, you weren't ready for it at this time. Now, one thing to remember is if you come to professional discussion and you're unsuccessful, this is a bit like a driving test. We have you for 75 minutes, hour to 75 minutes. And if you're not successful, what we are saying is during that time, you did not prove what we needed you to prove. And just like a driving test, you can learn to drive, you drive with your driving instructor, you drive with your mum and dad and your friends and everything else. Everybody will say you're a good driver, you're safe, you know, you keep within the speed limits, you do everything you need to do. But for the 45 minutes you were on test, something went wrong. We're not saying if you fail, we're not saying you're a bad consultant, we're not saying you're not a good consultant. What we're saying is for that period of time, you didn't demonstrate what we wanted you to demonstrate. I take that on if I were you and say, okay, this is, this is now my opportunity to shine, my opportunity to demonstrate what I need to demonstrate. I need to be the best consultant I can be for that time I'm being uh, involved in the professional discussion because I need to prove in that 75 minutes how good I am the rest of the time. That's my opportunity to do that. Bring your whole self to it and uh, we really do want you to succeed. So some top tips. Make friends with the framework, make friends with the criteria, be very familiar with those things before you put in your submission. We're not interested in fluff or filler or so what. We don't want anything in there that's going to leave us going, yeah, but what does that mean? We need good narrative that relates to the competencies. Remember what you told us in the written submission, have that with you because we will be discussing that. Make sure you plan ahead, make sure you're prepared, have a bit of a practice, think about how you're going to deal with this it will all uh, hold you in good stead for when you are pitching with a client as well. And then ask yourself the question, how am I? Am I in the right place to do this? Now, we, we, need, we will need notice if you're not, but if, you're, if your um, professional discussion is on Friday and by the time you get to Wednesday, the week has gone to hell in a handcart, are you really going to be in the best place to deal with that professional discussion? If you're not, contact your assessor. We have some flexibility 
If you contact them on the morning, there will be issues and we may not be able to do it again. Uh, but if you give them plenty of notice, they are very flexible. So if it's all going wrong this week, ask yourself, am I going to be able to pull it back? Am I in the best place to deal with this now? Or am I setting myself up to fail? So think about all those things. At the end of the day, remember, treat us as a, as a real pitch. You're the engagement. You're pitching to us. We want you to succeed. We want you to be successful. We want you to get this status. But we're not going to give it to you for nothing. You have to prove that you meet the competencies. So that's the end of the presentation for me. I'm going to go back to Natasha now. And hopefully we've got some, some questions from, from you guys. Yep, we do have some questions. Um, so we have a question here from Rachel who says, what is the cost and time commitment and has it helped people gain new business? Uh, in terms of the cost, it's uh, £800 plus VAT at the moment. Um, like a lot of things, uh, there we are potentially going to put it up in the new year. The cost will grow up in the new year to reflect all the costs that everybody's suffering at the moment. Uh, but currently, it is £800 plus VAT. In terms of time commitment, how long is a piece of string? Um, you could register today, submit tomorrow, and have your professional discussion next week. You could register today, and once you register, you have 90 days to upload your submission. You could wait till day 85, so there's 85 days gone. Uh, we have a five-day window in which to assess, so there's 90 days gone, and then arranging the professional discussion is between you and the assessor, and again, that can be however long it takes to find two slots in two diaries in order to do that. So it's a really vague answer, and I apologise for that, but it really depends on how fast you move we will reflect that as much as we can and get you through the process in a hurry. And uh, has it helped people gain new business? Yes, it has. Sorry, I missed that part of the question. Sorry. Uh, yes, it has. Yes, very much so. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's early days. Um, and like all things, uh, there's a there's a educational part for customers as well in terms of what, what the uh, status means and how it reflects on what people do. Uh, that is very much building as we go. We are working with the MCA to develop that and educate firms all over the place and uh, working with the government to educate all government departments as to what this means as well. But yes, it is already starting to gain people new business. Brilliant. Um, a question from Ty. Uh, does CMI accept applications from independent senior management consultants um, for the yes. accreditation? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. Yeah. We talk so about firms. not just those um, organisations. Yeah. No, no. Uh, we, we talk about firms, Ty, because uh, as you'd expect, the, the vast majority of our applicants currently are coming from firms. But absolutely, we have a, a cohort of independent uh, management consultants as well. Brilliant. Um, Valia has asked, uh, what if the resubmission fails? Can they try again in the future? You, you can try again in the future, yes. Um, the criteria at the moment are you have to wait six months before you can resubmit an application. Um, but obviously you can do that as many times as you want, but you have to wait six months in, in between every one. That's great. And this one's a little bit of a longer question, but hopefully it should be um, fairly easy to answer or we may come back to you depending. Um, so a question about the routes to CHMC. So they are a CMI center offering the level seven in professional consulting. And they just wanted clarity about this statement in the syllabus. It says uh, the pathway is aligned to the Chartered Management Consultant Competency Framework. Achievement of all units provides a pathway to completing CHMC assessment. Yes, I'm not sure what the question is, but having gone through that process, if you've, if you've achieved that qualification, that will give you a head start in, in a sense as you've got evidence, you've got uh, experience of being a management consultant, you're at a point where you would have a reasonable chance of passing the assessment. However, as I said all the way through, um, the assessment process is the same for everybody. So that will get you to the door uh, and then you need to go through the assessment process the same as everybody, the process that we've discussed today. Um, but that yeah, will so get hopefully you... that helps um, answer that question. I think it was just more the clarity that it doesn't give you the CHMC status. No, it doesn't. No. It just helps you build yes. up the criteria to... Yeah, to gets you to a point where you can where you can apply, but it does nothing gives you the status apart from going through the assessment process and, and passing both the written submission and the professional discussion. 
Brilliant. Um, we don't have any other questions in the chat, but we'll just give them a few seconds in case anyone has any other questions they want to ask. I'm going to ask a question if anybody wants to, if anybody's prepared to put an answer in the chat. Is anybody ready to uh, engage with the process on the back of this webinar? I forget any comments coming through. Not yet, but uh, right. there is a slight delay between us um, streaming and people typing. Okay, and the yearly review, um, obviously we've said that, you know, every year we'll assess you, make sure you've done your CPD, that kind of thing. Is there a cost for that, David? Uh, there isn't, there currently isn't a cost for that, but you do have to be, um, there's a membership cost. Uh, there's a yearly cost of uh, 50 pounds. Um, to, to maintain your position on the register. So we have a register of uh, chartered management consultants and to maintain your position on that register, we, we um, ask you for 50 pounds a year in order to do that. Brilliant. And we've had Ty say that yes, um, they are ready. Uh, so Excellent. that's a good response. And uh, one more question Sorry. here from uh, Valia. What is the pass and fail rate based on your experience? Currently, um, the, the pass rate is quite high. Currently, the pass rate is around uh, 90%, 92%. I think that I will, if you bear with me one second, I will tell you exactly what it was last week. Uh, just need to look at some data. David's here with the, uh, the hot of the press news for you. Uh, da, 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 da. Such a big spreadsheet, I can't actually find it in a hurry. <laughs> uh, I think it's the pass rate was around 92 to 94%. So quite, quite high. Oh, actually last week it was 93%. There you go. Hopefully that helps, Valia. Um, so that is all of the questions we've had for today. Um, sorry, um, sorry, Natasha, can I just add one more thing? The pass rate is high, but the pass rate is, is high because we provide lots of support. Now, what I mean by that is if you're not sure that this is right for you, talk to us. And we will tell you, we don't want people coming forward who really shouldn't be coming forward. So if you've got any doubt at all on the back of this, email us, let us know, and we will give you the guidance that you need as to whether now is the right time for you to go for that or whether you need a little bit more development um, uh, in, in order to, to be in a, a suitable place to go for it, to get the best out of the experience and have the best chance of, of uh, being awarded the status. Valia's um, snapping with another question. Have you identified trends in people failing? Is there a um, specific lack of evidence or is it the discussion route? There are, there are a couple of things. That's a really good question, Valia. And there are, there are a couple of things that are, are the main reasons for failure. One is uh, people don't turn up. Uh, and when I say don't turn up, I mean don't turn up mentally. So they are looking at their phones. They've you know tried to squeeze this in, the professional discussioning amongst two other meetings and have come off the back of a meeting trying to do this and then know they've got another meeting set for, for three o'clock if we're doing this at two o'clock. So they have what we call a hard stop, you know, they get to that point, we don't have everything we need. And they've said, we have to go, I've got to go, sorry, I've got another meeting to go to. So they're not taking it seriously. They're not turning up mentally as well as physically. They're not preparing and giving this the, 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 the credibility that it needs in order when they're engaging with it to, to get the best possible chance. The other main reason people fail is that they're not management consultants. They are either you know, specialists in terms of um, technical staff or finance staff or, or law or whatever it might be, um, or they are very, very good project managers. They're being called management consultants, but they're not actually management consultants and they can't demonstrate all the criteria that we're asking for, the 54 criteria. If you're a really good project manager, there are other awards that you can go for to be recognized as a good project manager. And that's why you need to get familiar with the criteria first, get familiar with the with the framework, make sure that it's for you before you come forward. That way you have the, the best possible chance. And that's where we give you the support, if you like, kind of, this is a horrible phrase and I can't think of anything else to say really, but weeding out the people that shouldn't be going for the, the status because it's not appropriate for them. Not because they're not appropriate people, but because this isn't appropriate for them and they would be better off going for something else. Absolutely. You don't want to waste anyone's time here. No. Um, and there's no point putting you through a process if it's not suitable for you. No. Um, so Ty's asked, is it possible to arrange a pre-application chat 
one-to-one um, -one with a CHMC manager and assessor? Not the assessor, but you can talk to me or you can talk to one of the team by emailing us at uh, chmc at managers.org.uk. And, we yep. will, we and will I'll, I'll put that email address in the chat as well for you, just so you've got that there. Um, Catherine has asked, uh, is the cost the same for a large consultancy firm as it is for an independent management consultant? Yes, it is. Yes. Um, and yeah, we just had a thank you for all of the detailed responses. Um, so we will be holding these sessions again in the new year, slightly different formats. Um, but please do, if you have any questions, reach out to the email address I've put in the chat. Um, and David, any uh, final comments before we finish? Uh, just good luck. If you're going to put in a, um, an application, a submission, uh, good luck. As, as we've said all the way through, we're not wasting anybody's time. If you're not appropriate, we will tell you. If you're not sure, have a chat with us first and we will guide you. Um, and happy holidays to everybody. That's fantastic. So that is it for today's session. Thank you to everyone who joined us and thank you, David, for your insights and expertise. And um, for any additional information and guidance, you can contact your firm's um, CHMC program manager or if you're an independent, you can contact a member of the CHMC team at chmc at managers.org.uk. A recording of the webinar will be made available for all those who registered to attend the event as well. And please do take a few minutes to let us know your thoughts on today's event by completing our evaluation form. The link is in the uh, chat. You might have to scroll up a little bit. Um, thank you again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time.